I'm Woody Holton and I teach at the University of South Carolina and I'm going to talk today about the ratification of the U.S. Constitution about the Federalist Papers which forwarded that movement and the Bill of Rights. And the first module uh, before I get into the ratification campaign is just to look at the completed Constitution and specifically its structure. Got to begin with the preamble. Many of you may have been forced to memorize it, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. It sounds like glittering generalities, just vague phrases that boilerplate. It's not. Those clauses in the preamble have very specific meanings. For instance, establish justice. What could be more vague and general than that? But it has a specific meaning. The authors of the Constitution and the people who supported ratifying the Constitution believed that two groups were victims of terrible injustice under the Articles of Confederation. And those two groups were creditors, like if you've got a credit card debt, American Express or Visa is your creditor. You owe money to the bank and the credit card. Uh, company, or if you if you uh, have a loan on your car, or if you have a house mortgage, that's your creditor. And the framers of the Constitution thought that creditors were really getting defrauded under the Articles of Confederation, the, and the Constitution would fix that. Uh, I'll give you the details in a minute. So that's what that. Re if you see how they use that phrase, establish justice, that's who they wanted to do uh, justice to was creditors. They also wanted to do justice to public creditors was just a fancy word of saying people that the government owed money to. The government owed money to a lot of people in 1787. Both the 13 state governments and Congress, that is the federal government, owed money. Initially, they'd owed money to the soldiers who would fought in the war because they couldn't give them actual money. They had to give them basically IOUs. But then those IOUs had been bought up by speculators, bondholders we call them, and so they had to be paid at least the framers of the Constitution thought so, and they weren't getting paid. They were victims of real injustice. And so one of the things the Constitution does, give the federal government the power to levy taxes uh, and pay off the, the federal government debt, and actually it ended up paying off most of the state debts as well. Establish justice. It's not just a glittering generality. I'll give you two more examples. Um, ensure domestic tranquility. A lot of people, oh, domestic tranquility, they kind of imagine a family by the fireside. There's no place like home, and, or home sweet home. Uh, that's not what they mean by domestic tranquility. D d domestic tranquility means there's no rebellion. And, and the federal government, by giving the, the, um, the Constitution, by giving the federal government the ability to levy taxes, is giving the federal government the ability to levy an army to be used to put down rebellions, like Shays' Rebellion in Massachusetts, which most textbooks talk about. But what the textbooks don't tell you is that there were rebellions like Shays' Rebellion in all 13 states. And so we're now going to have a federal army. Of course, we had one during the war, but during the Revolutionary War, but it whittled down to nothing afterwards because Congress had no money. Now Congress is going to have money because it can tax you and me. And it's going to have the money to put down rebellions um, both by farmers and tenants and various people that rebelled. Maybe you have people from one state trying to take land from another state. But let's also remember enslaved people uh, and their uh, rebellions. That's what the Constitution means by ensure domestic tranquility. Um, and then the easiest of the three that I'll mention provide for the common defense. If the government can levy taxes, it can field an army to be used not only against internal rebellions and thereby preserving domestic tranquility, but also against external threats, whether it's pirates in the Mediterranean or the British or possibly the Spanish uh, uh, or, most of all, Native Americans. So as we kind of walk through the structure of the Constitution, uh, it's important to realize that the preamble is not just a bunch of glittering generalities. Now the only three, there are seven clauses, I'm sorry, seven articles in the Constitution, and the only three that are really well organized are the first three. But that's good for you because that means you've only got to nail those three and they are starting uh, with the people's branch, that is 
the Congress, uh, both the House and the Senate, their powers and the limits on their powers are discussed in Article I. Uh, and then Article II is about the executive, uh, the president, and Article III is about the courts, especially the Supreme Court. So there's your first three articles. We're almost halfway home. Uh, but as I say, the, the uh, rest of them are a little more, a little less organized. Uh, Article IV is about three things that Congress is going to do for the states. One relates to something I just said, and that is Congress is going to ensure the states have Republican governments. That is that some state you know, doesn't have a coup where somebody establishes himself or herself as the king or queen of that state. Uh, if that happens, the feds are going to send in the U.S. Army to prevent that from happening. Uh, and that was a big concern. Not that anybody was going to choose a king or queen, but the thing was going to get messed up by a rebellion like Shay's Rebellion. So th under Article 4, the Congress has the power and the duty to go in and, and as they put it, ensure Republican government. Um, it, the also uh, related to that, the federal government has the uh, uh, duty to protect each state against insurrection, as I've been discussing, but also against invasion. Article 4 is how Congress will, and I might put this in quote marks, uh, help the states. Article 5 is how to amend the Constitution. As you know, it takes two-thirds of both houses and then three-quarters of the states to, amendment, to amend it, or there's a procedure to have a second constitutional convention, uh, but that's never happened. That was Article 4. Article, uh, I'm sorry, that was Article 5. Uh, and then Article 6 is miscellaneous, but the big takeaway from Article 6 of the Constitution is that the federal government's going to have a lot of power uh, over the states. Um, the one little miscellaneous thing it does is gives the federal government the same power to pay off debts that it had uh, before, same power and obligation. But here's how the states are really kind of going to be subsumed under the federal government, no longer sovereign states as they had been under the Articles of Confederation. One is that every office holder, uh, you could be the Iowa State dog catcher, you have to take an oath to the U.S. Constitution. Most states also require you to take an oath to their constitution, but you got to, uh, you know, it's not just for the president, as we all know, uh, you know, on Inauguration Day, puts a hand on the Bible and, uh, uh, and then uh, takes, raises the other hand and swears an oath to, to protect, to defend, protect, to defend and protect the U.S. Constitution. The president's got to do it, House and Senate and all the federal judges have to do it, but even state officials have to swear to the Constitution. Now, there's a really positive piece of that, which is uh, nobody can require anyone to swear that they're going to uh, be a member of any particular religion or protect any religion. There's no religious test as part of that oath that every, that every federal and even state official has to take. And the other thing that Article 6 does on behalf of the federal government and its kind of continuing battles with the states is that it makes the federal government the supreme law of the land. So uh, if, um, say, Virginia wants to pass a law uh, passing paper money, uh, adopting paper money, which the Constitution prohibits the states from doing, um, then uh, if you don't like being forced to take paper money, you just sue and the federal government uh, will overturn that law because the federal uh, Constitution takes precedence uh, over the states. That's Article 6. And then finally, uh, Article 7 is how do you ratify uh, the Constitution, um, and uh, the, the answer is nine out of the 13 states uh, have to approve the idea. And once nine have ratified it, it becomes the law of the land for those nine states. It was theoretically possible that exactly nine states would ratify it. The other four would refuse, and in fact, some of the later states did delay for a while. Uh, but the Constitution says that not, uh, once nine states ratify it, it governs those nine states, not the other four, until they, until they also ratify it. And this is why I say, on the one hand, the Constitution really was unconstitutional. Um, the Constitution in operation at the time that our Constitution was adopted was the Articles of Confederation, and they just threw it out and said, oh, the hell with that. We don't care what the law says. We're going to do what we want to do. We're going to propose this new Constitution. So that's pretty sketchy. But on the other hand, it was a people's coup in the sense that what the framers of the Constitution had done in Philadelphia, 
concluding on September 17, 1787, what they had done was propose a constitution. It would have zero effect. It would be toilet paper until nine out of 13 states ratified it and made it the law uh, of the land. Um, and, and they provided a procedure. They were afraid the state legislatures wouldn't approve it. And they also thought, oh, these state legislatures are not that democratic anyway. Uh, they had a point there. And so they set up their own procedure where there would be special, uh, and this is good too, to, you know, because when you elected for a state legislature, you might have voted for your brother-in-law, but now you're doing something serious. You're, you're uh, deciding on a national constitution. So it's, it was a very good idea, in my opinion, to have these new state ratifying conventions for one purpose, to vote yes or no on the Constitution. So uh, Article 7 does, of the Constitution does all of that. It sets up this procedure of ratifying conventions to vote up or down on the Constitution. And once nine do, it covers those nine states.